It's awesome to have you here today. In this video, I'm going to talk about a lot of the details on golf balls, picking the right golf ball, and talk a lot about the things that you're not going to hear in marketing that the big companies don't necessarily want you to know about golf balls. So let's jump right on in there and let's start talking about this. So uh, first off, a dozen golf balls to manufacture those cost about $12. So if you're going for you know, a Titleist golf ball, a TaylorMade golf ball, a Callaway, whatever your favorite golf ball brand is, it's gonna be roughly the same because they're really using the same materials or pretty much the same materials if you're buying those high-end golf ball brands. So they all have good quality control. And to be honest, there's really just not a lot of difference between them. The golf balls are very similar to each other. So if you take a look at these charts, I'm gonna show you a couple pieces of research here. And the first one I'll go over here is a driver chart. And you're gonna see that it has all the different golf balls from different manufacturers. And you're gonna see that the spin rates are pretty similar. So if you look from, from left to right, I believe it is on the bottom, you'll see the spin rate's not a ton of difference on there when, it talks, when we're talking about driver. And if you look at the launch angle, it's less than a degree difference between all the different brands. So this is not my opinion. This is not asking one person and the next person. This is saying, let's take a robot, let's have them hit these golf shots, and let's measure and see what happens to see the real performance of the golf ball. So with a driver, all the golf balls are very, very similar. Now, when you go into short game shots, that's what we'll talk about more, that's when you're gonna see a lot of the differences. And we'll show you a chart here later how the spin differences can really vary between the types of golf ball, especially going between cheaper Serling golf balls and more expensive golf balls. But the first thing to know is the manufacturing process. There's not one golf ball that a company spends two, three times more money on that's an ultra, ultra premium golf ball. They're all making really good golf balls. The quality control is good. So it really just comes down to picking the one that you like the best. And most specifically, you like best around the greens. One of the golf balls I think is really cool is the, the Snell golf ball. This is a guy named Dean Snell. He worked with uh, Titleist, came up with the original Pro-V, worked with TaylorMade, came up with the, the Penta, a lot of good TaylorMade golf balls. So he's really been de developing golf balls for high-end golf ball companies for a long time. Uh, the last couple of years, he started his own co company called Snell. I play the MTB Black is the ones that I really like. I am a little bit biased. I'll tell you, he, he sends us free golf balls, but the reason that I reached out to him is because I tried some of these and these things are dead on your Titleist Pro Vs. They're dead on your TaylorMade TP5X. I mean, they're very, very similar to that. So if you're looking at what are the differences in golf balls, the main thing is when we're talking about a Serlin golf ball, which is the outer coating of the golf ball, versus a urethane golf ball. So this outer coating on the golf ball, what they do with this is they break it down into multiple layers. So if you take a slice of this golf ball, and I'll show you a close-up of this, you're gonna notice the outer coating that's in white, that's your cover, and that's where it's gonna be the different material. So an, a urethane golf ball, what this outer cover is, they can make that soft, and then they can put various different layers inside this golf ball to change the performance on that. Now, with a urethane golf ball, this outer coating that makes soft, the inner coating, the one, or let's, let's just talk about the core, the big piece in the middle, they make that pretty soft also. So what happens is when you hit this golf ball, it compresses the golf ball about a third of the thickness of this golf ball with your driver. So you make a swing, it smashes that driver in, or smashes this golf ball in. If you look at your, your face after you hit a golf ball, you'll notice sometimes it has a pretty big mark on there. Well, that's because it's smushing into this golf ball. So it's taking the soft outer core, it's smushing against the soft inner core, and that actually helps to decrease the spin. So with a driver, you really want low spin shots. Just like that shot we, or that chart we saw earlier, all the drivers have about the same spin rate on them, roughly the same spin rate. So with a urethane golf ball, they make a soft outer core, a soft inner core, low spin shot. With a Serlin golf ball, the cheaper golf balls, the ones that you buy for 10, 15, 20 dollars, they still have this soft outer core and soft inner core, but they don't have these other layers in there. So they spin low on the driver, but when you get to the wedges, they're also not spinning very much on the wedges. Now with your higher end golf balls, your, your Pro Vs, your TP5X, your Snell golf balls, what's happening here is they're putting these other layers between the core and the outer layer, and these are actually harder. So the, the second layer between the outside, the next layer in is actually a harder layer. And what happens is when you're hitting a wedge shot and you're not compressing the full golf ball, you're just barely compressing this golf ball. What you do, instead of compressing the outer layer against the core to get low spin, you compress the outer layer against the next layer. Now that next layer is hard, 
Imagine something, your wedge hitting something really soft and that being smushed up against something really hard. Well, that's going to really bite extra and it's going to create more backspin on the shot. So when you're buying a premium golf ball, that's what you're paying for. We saw on the driver, they're all the same. If you take a look at this wedge chart, what you're actually going to see is on one half of the chart, you have all these groupings of premium golf balls. Those are your golf balls that are, that are higher price golf balls. If you look in the middle of the chart, you're going to see kind of a mid-range golf ball. You'll see that you lose some spin and you start to, the, the launch goes up a little bit higher when we're talking about these short wedge shots. So this is just for wedge shots when we're doing this. And then you'll notice on the far left of the chart, you're going to see that's the least amount of spin. Those are the cheapest golf balls. This is where you really see the difference in golf balls. Now, Snail, you'll notice it's sitting right in the middle of those high performance golf balls, but the price of a Snail is $32 a dozen versus paying $40. Seven forty-eight dollars whatever normal price golf balls are from Titleist and TaylorMade. Now, what I'm not saying is these snow golf balls really aren't going to be much different than your other premium golf balls. I'm not saying these are some magic golf ball that's going to be fantastic. What I'm saying is they're, they're daggone near exactly the same as all the premium golf balls. They're right there in the middle, but they're just cheaper. So it's a little bit better of a deal for the player, and that's why I always recommend them. I think, hey, you know, if you can get a really good performing product and save 30% or whatever on the price, that's pretty good. So what I used to play before this was the, the TaylorMade golf balls. Uh, some of these spin really good. The two that I personally like are the TaylorMade, the TP5X. I like the Snell MTB Black, and I like the uh, Titleist Pro V1X. Now for me, I think those are all really good golf balls because low spin on the driver, but they're all on the higher spin with your wedges. So you can hit that driver that launches up in the air, knuckles through the wind, gets you some great distance with the drives, then you can grab a wedge and have one of the most high spinning golf, golf balls that's out there. So those are both really good. That brings me to another point here. There's no ultra long golf ball. So a lot of times, you know, these companies will market uh, their golf balls as being 10 yards farther than another company. Or maybe you'll buy a pinnacle uh, extreme distance or a pinnacle whatever it is or a top flight or somebody will bring out one of those golf balls saying, oh, I got a long hole here. I'm gonna bring out this rock hard ball to get some extra distance. When we looked at that driver spin rate chart, we're seeing that those, those really hard golf balls don't actually go any farther than your premium golf balls. So if you buy the premium golf balls, that's the maximum distance you're gonna get. If you buy really any daggone golf ball from any company, you're really getting the maximum distance. If you ever hear a golf ball company talking about how you're gonna pick up tons of different distance with their golf ball, it's, they're talking about one yard on a 200 and something yard drive. It's, it's almost nothing. Any golf ball you play, going to be about the same off the driver. Uh, one of the other things is they'll oftentimes name these to try to trick you. So we talked about how premium golf balls get the spin with the wedges and they decrease the spin with the driver. Cheaper golf balls, same with the driver, but on the wedges they don't have any spin. Now they'll try to trick you with this by saying, you know, naming these soft and super soft and ultra soft and high spin when they're talking about the cheaper golf balls. Those $15 a dozen, $20 a dozen golf balls, those are not going to spin. They're not going to spin anywhere near what the premium golf balls are going to spin. So it doesn't matter if the name is soft, super soft, spin, whatever it is, that's all just marketing to try to get you to try that golf ball at a cheaper price. So it's not really going to work that well for you. Lower compression. Whenever you drop the compression, this is kind of a myth that I've heard out there and one thing that they'll use to try to market this to you, they'll say that if you're a slower swing speed player, I'm going to lower the compression of the golf ball and that's going to help you to get all this crazy distance. Well, in reality, not really going to get much distance. If we're talking about a 200, 250 yard drive, you're going to get maybe, or let's say it's a 200 yard drive, you're maybe going to get one more mile or one more yard of distance, two more yards of distance. It's not really enough to notice. Again, when you're talking driver, any golf ball is going to do. When you drop that compression down though, what that does is that makes it tricky to get the ball to perform correctly around the greens. So we have these different layers specifically designed to perform in different ways. And if we drop the compression really low to market this as a longer golf ball for, for sh slower swing speed players, it's not gonna perform around the greens. So it's not saying that low compression is good or bad. I just don't think it makes much difference and the robot testing shows it doesn't make much difference either. It's just pure, pure marketing stuff. One of the other things is people will ask me about what about other cheaper golf balls? What about your vice golf ball? I've hit those. I don't think the quality control on the Vice Golf Balls is up to the standards of what you would see with a, a Titleist Pro VX, a TaylorMade Golf Ball, a, a, a Snell MTB Golf Ball. I really think that those, when I hit those, the performance is much more consistent 
than what I see with some of these other brands. You may have even heard the, the Kirkland golf ball from Costco. That was a really good golf ball. What that actually is, that's a, a design from an old tailor-made golf ball. So they just took the exact formula from an older tailor-made golf ball and copied it. And that's why you don't see them anymore because they're, they're not able to produce those. They've gotten a big lawsuit with it and that kind of stuff. So those are completely fine, but you just can't really find them. And you know, if you do, you have to pay normal prices for the golf ball. They're not any better than any of these normal golf balls that you can buy that I'm talking about here today. One interesting fact here is when we're playing in the cold, I thought this is a great point to bring up. And a lot of times players will go out and they'll buy these premium golf balls and they'll be playing in the middle of the winter and spending a lot of money on these golf balls when they're really not gonna perform that great in the winter anyways. Now we talked about how when you hit a golf ball, it's gonna compress this golf ball. Well, when the golf ball gets really cold, let's say it's 40 degrees outside, this ball hardens up a little bit. It's not gonna compress, it's not as elastic, it's not gonna really jump off the face as much, and you're gonna lose some distance, probably 10 or 15 yards shorter than when you're playing and it's 70 or 80 degrees outside, which is how the golf ball is designed to do it. So make sure if you are playing in the winter, keep the golf balls in your house, keep them warm. If you keep them outside in your garage, they're gonna start out cold. If you keep them warm, you're gonna get that performance at least for nine holes. If you really wanna get crazy with it, put, your, put a couple golf balls in the pro shop, pick those up at the turn, you'll be playing with fresh golf balls the entire time. So those are some of the myths that I see out there. Those are some of the things, some of the tricks that I think golf ball manufacturers are, are doing to try to get you to purchase a particular golf ball over another one. When we look at these charts, we're seeing that they're much more consistent as long as we're buying the right, correct type of golf ball for our game. I don't believe that it's important to to buy a high-end urethane $40 to $50 a dozen golf ball if we're a beginning golfer. The performance is so small, we're not, when we look at these charts, it's not very much difference. If you really care about getting the best performance though, I'd absolutely go with one of those high-performing golf balls. Remember with the driver, if we wanna simplify this down, just a couple key bullet points. With the driver, there's no difference. Play any golf ball, they're all relatively the same. Maybe you could make a, 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 a 100 RPMs difference, but it's not gonna really matter much in your game. So the driver, forget about it. Any golf ball that's manufactured by a reputable brand, it's gonna be good. Wedges, that's where you really notice the difference. If you want that elite wedge performance, you're gonna to wanna to go with a higher end golf ball that's a urethane cover. That's what's gonna allow it to bite against that second layer, these multi layers in here and get a lot of spin. And then lastly, I prefer the Snell golf ball because it's not because it's better than everything else out there and it's some magic golf ball. It's the same as everything out there, just 18, 20 bucks cheaper. So what do you need to do from here? We talked about how a lot of these golf balls perform very similarly. If you're buying a premium golf ball, you're gonna get per premium performance. But here's the problem that we still have. If you come down and you hit this golf ball and you hit it thin and it skulls over the green, doesn't matter what kind of golf ball we're playing with, it's not gonna be a good shot. We're really gonna struggle. If we come down and chunk four or five inches behind this golf ball, we're gonna get mud and dirt and everything between the face and the golf ball and it's gonna dribble 10 or 15 feet. The number one thing that we can work on to get the best performance out of these golf balls is to make a clean ball first contact and then have the divot after the ball. I have what I call the number one fundamental, the real fundamental in the top speed golf system. And that's called the stable fluid spine. In this, we talk about how my spine angle is gonna be tilted a little bit away at address. I go to the top and my spine's tilted away. I come down and my spine is tilted away and I'm rotating around this very stable spine. It keeps my head still. It allows golf to be very, very easy. Now, one of the best videos from this, I'm gonna play in a second. Just click the card that comes up on your screen or the link down below. You'll get instant access to that full video. You'll start to learn the stable fluid spine and make some more solid contact. Let's go ahead and get started. It allows us to have consistency in the golf swing. And what is it that allows that consistency to fall apart and create some bad rounds? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Let's go ahead and get started. Everything that's, that happens in the golf swing is initially dictated by what happens with the spine. So if we're looking at a skeleton, you know, my spine's in the center of my body and everything else in my body is attached to my spine. So my shoulders are attached to my spine, my arms attached to my shoulders, and then my arms are gonna be actually swinging the club. Now, when I see players that are really struggling, those guys that are hitting it out in the woods right, they're hitting in the left, then they have a few good holes, what's happening is their spine angle is changing. As they go to the top of the swing, maybe they have a reverse pivot, Spines angled back, falling back to the right, but there's a lot of inconsistency in that. And what happens is, as good athletes as we all are, the number one fundamental in golf, correct, keep it nice and stable, but fluid, we're gonna be able to hit those good clean shots time and time again. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this series of videos. Henrik Stenson, top five in both driving distance and accuracy. Roy McIlroy here, 
playing some of the best golf that anybody's ever played, and you can see just how stable.